Welcome back. Well, we can now see some live pictures of Sir Richard Branson, who's just launched his first Virgin Galactic fully crewed flight to the edges of space. It was delayed by around an hour because of the weather. So exciting. Forty five seconds. Well, Greg Milam is there at the launch site and here he is. We can bring him in now to give us some more details on what's going on here. Ten well, we're seconds. counting down, as you can hear, uh, counting down to this launch. Let's listen into mission control. Five, three, two, one. Release, release, release. Clean release. Ignition. Good rocket motor burn. There's Mach 1, trimming now. Trim complete, Unity is pointed directly up and heading to space. Things are looking great. We are 25 seconds into the burn now, approaching Mach 2. We can see from the ground. 30 seconds, Mach 2. Everything's looking really good and stable. To an altitude of 56 miles above the Earth. 40 seconds. So systems go. 45 seconds. Okay. 50 seconds approaching Mach 3. I think we should stay on this as long There's as we, we're three. seeing it, though, because, you know, this is... We want those windows pointed down towards the earth to maximize that incredible view. So Feather is coming up now, and the pilots are also enabling the RCS, or Reaction Control System, which is what they'll use to control the attitude of the vehicle while we're outside the atmosphere. All right, Feather is all the way up. We are at about 250,000 feet now and climbing. As soon as we cross the boundary to space, we'll hear a word from our founder, Sir Richard Branson. Welcome to space, Unity 22. as he always does. Fortunately, we have a lot of cameras uh, recording things on board today, and we'll be sure to capture his magical words and share them with the world when they're available. We reached Apogee 282,000 feet. Remember the day, remember where you are, and remember who you shared this with, and remember the name Virgin Galactic, because today, space is virgin territory. So there we are. Uh, Sir Richard Branson has reached space. That uh, dream he's had since watching the moon landing in 1969 as a teenager has been realized today. Uh, they were hoping that we would hear some words from uh, Sir Richard Branson once he, he reached that landmark. But they seem to be having some technical problems, maybe not surprisingly, 50, 56 miles up uh, above the surface of the Earth, but a momentous moment in, in space travel and, of course, for Sir Richard Branson uh, and Virgin Galactic. Having had that moment and uh, the, those moments of them floating in space that, again, they're, they're trying to bring pictures of that to us, uh, it will begin its descent after those few minutes of weightlessness and will be on the ground again in, in 10 minutes so or so. We, uh, we can speak to Emily Brusden, uh, uh, professor, the, the director of the Astra campus at the seats. University of York, and seeing these Our pictures, Dr. Brusden, really what's your, what's your feeling of what this must be like for those aboard? For passengers. 
Now, when we talk about space travel, a lot of people know and expect the boost portion of the flight to be loud and thrilling, uh, but what's interesting is re-entry is also very similar as supersonic air is flowing over the vehicle in the feathered configuration, shock waves form on top of the cabin, which are audible to those inside. And for those of you on site watching on the ground, you should be able to hear a double sonic boom as Spaceship Unity once again uh, Dr. Emily Preston, um, I think we, we lost you just for a second there. What, Sorry. Yeah, what, 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 is, what is your feeling watching this and, and what, do you, what do you think they must be feeling? We, we keep seeing some broken up pictures of them uh, floating weightless in, inside that spacecraft. What would they be feeling right now? Well, we just keep using this word exciting, don't we? Everything's exciting, but this is exciting beyond anything that you've ever experienced before, going up into space, going through that rocket burn where you're you're in a little craft, you're pointed straight up out of the Earth. All right, you're so going at many times um, the speed of sound. You might be experiencing kind of three times the force of gravity that you would experience on the Earth just to get up there. And then you have these magical minutes of weightlessness where kind of what's happening is your whole craft is falling towards the earth at exactly the same rate you are. So there's no extra force there. You're just sort of um, floating around. I think we got just a few seconds of clips of uh, the, um, what I guess they're now astronauts. So they've, they've passed the the 80 kilometer astronomical line. So they're uh, these astronauts floating in space, just magical. HD camera data down to the ground. Yeah, we can see that um, altitude on the, on the right hand side uh, so of the screen. We can see how quickly they're descending back, of course, back into the, heat, uh, the Earth's atmosphere really and then uh, that, that will uh, that, that craft here. will land oh, like a traditional aircraft. It will glide back down to the runway from, from which it took and off, what, an hour and a bit ago. Uh, and, and I guess for, for Richard Branson, for those on board, bearing in mind they were, they were now, doing the, the job of down, the assessing what this, is what this is like as an experience, uh, that I guess locked, the pilots that's the test, isn't it? Did, did they achieve what they wanted to achieve, as remarkable as this all looked? is down and locked now. Well, if they're seeing any of these views that we're seeing from now uh, from the feed, then they, they must have just been astounded by how beautiful the Earth is and that black sky, the curved surface of the Earth, the desert below. And you were talking earlier about some of the, 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 the experiments, aside from this being a remarkable marketing moment for, for, for Virgin Galactic, it's there's the a lot of science involved in, in what they're trying to do on this craft normal. as well. All of us will get to hear that on. So, so huge our... amounts of technology go into the development of building these systems. And I think that's important to acknowledge because we want to build bigger and better and safer systems to take not just tourists, but also scientists into space to perform what we need to. Uh, we're talking about going to the moon in the not so distant future. We need to be able to do that safely and comfortably. Then, of course, we've got all the experiments that we want to do to understand space, to understand what it's like to be in microgravity where you experience almost no gravitational force. I mean, even the, the very outlandish ideas of can we build systems that would help us survive, say, a journey through space to Mars. These are ideas that we really are testing to see if they're feasible. I think we just heard it. You may be seeing a slightly delayed picture there. We just heard the sonic booms so, Richard, from that, uh, that craft. This has got to be uh, and we're about to hear from uh, Sir Richard Branson you. as well. I think we should listen in uh, to what um, they might be hearing like? here on the ground. Sonic booms on re-entry now. No, they still seem to be having some technical problems reaching, re reaching those um, uh, on board uh, as they uh, come back down 32,000 feet, coming back down. Uh, to, to land on the runway here and be reunited with their families after that uh, extraordinary experience. And I guess, uh, Dr. Brusden, if, you, if you're still there, what we're seeing is so different, isn't it? We see the inside right, of that capsule sorry, we're, much we're more like a, a, an aircraft the than, broadcast, than the, the rockets again, and the capsules we do have we've been lots used to seeing before. The spaceship, and Absolutely. Will... This is space travel done in style. This is not what you might have seen when you've seen an astronaut go uh, on a launch up to the International Space Station where it's a very cramped, very tiny little capsule that we use to transport people to the space station that's done purely to conserve as much fuel. Remember, the space station is a little bit further than what these um, people are going up to today. So uh, we're talking about maybe we're up to um, 83, 84 kilometers today. Uh, we're going up to 400 kilometers to get to the International Space Station. And that requires huge amounts of fuel. Every, every square centimeter of space is so valuable uh, when you're taking people up to the International Space Station that you just get no, no creature comforts. So to see the interior of this um, Unity spacecraft 
which is so different. It looks like, I guess, first class of an international jet that's going around, maybe the, the most luxurious uh, private jet that you can imagine. Creating such a beautiful, beautiful. On the ground here's some, some audio, and I think just listen to Richard Branson. Now I'm looking down at a beautiful spaceport. Uh, congratulations to everybody for, uh, for creating such a beautiful, beautiful place. Congratulations to all our wonderful team of Virgin Galactic for 17 years of hard, hard work to get us this far. All right, so I'm so happy we can catch a little Richard part of who is, who is he is now officially uh, an astronaut, uh, which is the big difference from, from when he woke up this morning, uh, so having reached that landmark that is um, defined by uh, NASA earlier, uh, of uh, more than 50 miles above uh, um, so the Earth's the surface. Right and they are now uh, back on their way down. Uh, you can see the altitude dropping. The, the fleet of cars that took them out uh, an hour or so really ago cool uh, for this journey has now gone back out to the runway, so clearly expecting them to be back on. Uh, the ground shortly and uh, and then we're expecting to hear uh, at a news conference from Sir Richard Branson uh, a little later now, uh, but uh, you can only imagine the, uh, the jubilation the they, are they are feeling and, and Dr. Branson it, it seems from, in the United from what, States and from what the we saw that everything America, went um, smoothly but, but talk us through again this, this issue of whether they actually went to space or not this, this debate that exists about where desert, space actually begins above spaceport folks turning our attention right above the sky NASA and the um, U.S. Air Force defines space slightly differently to how we also def how we define it in international conventions. So the Earth's atmosphere is continuous. It just goes um, up, up into space. It gets uh, more and more rarefied the higher you go. So sort of choosing a line where the atmosphere stops is really hard because it's a very um, diverse thing. But they have, we have to make a decision of where, the, where does Earth's atmosphere finish and where does kind of space, outer space begin. NASA defined this as being at the 50 mile point above the surface of the Earth. So that's when they give their um, astronaut wings to anybody who exceeds that. Um, so that's sitting at about 80 kilometers. But the definition that's been used by the international community when we set up things like um, space treaties, that's called the Kármán line, and that's defined at about 100 kilometers. So 20 kilometers more doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a little bit higher. Mothership Eve right there above space. How about a round of applause for the Mothership Eve? And we're expecting that um, that craft to uh, to land from that journey, whatever you um, whatever you des designate space, space or not. Certainly, Virgin Galactic taking that NASA definition uh, and, and believing that all of those aboard are astronauts. Some of them already had been on on test flights before, but um, a number of them hadn't, including Richard Branson, of course, astronaut 001, as he described himself uh, when he arrived at spaceport uh, this morning. Uh, but they will be back on. They will be back on. They will be back on the uh, the ground. As shortly, and Dr. Brunson, when you think of, of th this journey Richard Branson's been on from, as he talks about, watching that moon landing in, in 1969 to, I think, talking to Buzz Aldrin in the 90s about whether it would be possible to use a plane-type craft uh, for this, and then the, the launch of Virgin Galactic back in 2004, the, the loss of one of those craft and a pilot, of course. Did you ever think that it would be possible that we would see this day uh, actually happening and, and watching these, these pictures as we are now? It does feel like we're living a little bit in the future, doesn't it? It's so it's so great. And when you, there's something about us, I think, that's really, really deeply ingrained to be excited about exploration. And when you think about going back to 1969 with Apollo missions and even more recently the 50th anniversary of that, it just stirs these amazing emotions of excitement and exploration. So to see that happen from in the course of a lifetime, to go from being completely every human that's ever existed walking on the surface of the Earth to now now putting where it's maybe a few hundred people have been into space, uh, most of them astronauts, although I think very, very soon there's going to be a lot of tourists that are going to join that group. It's, a, it's an amazing advancement of technology that we've come through. And I think we should, I guess, globally be proud that we've managed to do such an amazing accomplishment. Would you like to go? All right, we have three landing gear. Absolutely. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be a stunning view, if nothing else? Uh, pilots are going to be landing on runway 3 4 today, so that's coming from the south. What do you think the, the feelings must be for someone for like Sir Richard Branson, who's 
who's not a, not a scientist, of course, is obviously clearly invested, <coughs> excuse me, is invested in this over many runway. years. So, for example, three, what must four, it be eight, like uh, for, for a civilian, if you like, to, to make a journey like this? We are just about a thousand feet. I think whether you're a civilian or whether you're a scientist, there's an, um, there's an amount of when you get to this point of being up above the earth, you're looking back down, you're seeing a perspective that very, very few have seen. And for Richard Branson, that's a mixed feeling, I guess, that's also coming in about his drive for very, very so long. I mean, he thought his first flight was going to happen in 2007. Here we are 15 years later, um, success. So it must be incredibly uh, fulfilling. But then just, I think, just take that step back and look at our planet and realize this is a planet. This is our space that we have to live. And we, we talk a lot about how we have to look after it. And it's a perspective that astronauts, I think, yeah. have very, very keenly. Nose gear, touchdown. Yeah. Dr. Brussel, sorry to interrupt, just to say they are now safely down uh, on the ground. Richard Vanson and his crew have returned safely. You saw the chase plane alongside them, but they are now back on the back on the runway that uh, uh, they, they took off from a couple of hours ago. And uh, there you go. There's the reaction from uh, the, uh, the Virgin Galactic founder uh, himself. A successful mission to, to those of us watching from outside, everyone returning safely. And a remarkable moment for him, of course, in that journey that Dr. Brusden was just talking about, uh, that he has been on to taking himself into space uh, and, as he says, really unleashing now the, the, the possibility of this being a new era in space travel for many more people to follow him uh, into space. So the spaceship Unity continuing its journey up the runway. Uh, there will be safety checks and all kinds of... Uh, things to happen before they are reunited with their families and then there will be a news conference as I said where we'll hear from uh, Richard Branson uh, a little later uh, this evening uh, late this afternoon, around six o'clock we're expecting that news conference will take place and we'll hear from him again but look at that image there of uh, Spaceship Unity back on the ground here in New Mexico and Richard Branson now officially an astronaut.